It didn't work. When does the magic happen, huh? <laughs> Disney Animation's 100th birthday is, of course, a pretty huge deal. The studio has been inspiring the imaginations of generations now, and whether you're a proud Disney adult or just casually enjoy a movie from the House of Mouse every so often, there's no denying just how significant its now century-long legacy is. Enter Wish, Disney's latest theatrical film and one meant to celebrate 100 years of the beloved animation giant. Does Wish live up to the hype built up by 100 years of Disney magic? And more importantly, will you enjoy watching it? Oh, this is it! Shall we? I'm coming! We'll start off with the movie's premise. And don't worry, we'll warn you before we get into the more spoilery stuff later. The star of Wish is an adorable yellow ball of energy who uses magic to grant wishes. But if you're asking about the main character, that would be 17-year-old Asha. She's an awkward but always well-intentioned young woman who wants to become an apprentice to the beloved King Magnifico, who founded the Kingdom of Rosas. This desire is in part due to the King's role as protector of the people's wishes. When citizens turn 18, they hand their wishes to the King for safekeeping, ensuring they won't be destroyed and hoping that one day they might be granted. Asha wants her now, 100-year-old grandfather, to have his wish granted at last, seeing how long he's waited. But when when Asha discovers that Magnifico doesn't plan to grant most of the wishes, not some, most. Seeing any potential danger as a full stop, she's convicted to make a wish to bring the people's wishes back to them, so they won't be living without a key part of who they are. It's a simple premise that allows for a feel-good movie you can really immerse yourself in. But what's a good premise without good visual presentation to back it up? Wish's approach to visual style is interesting, to say the least. It tries to combine the old-school vibes of 2D animated Disney movies while simultaneously keeping the fabulous 3D animation we've come to expect from the company. Personally, I feel like it's been long enough to where a fully 2D Disney movie would be a treat, but it's still a fresh approach. To put it simply, the animation is fluid, like you'd expect from something like Encanto, but its color palettes and background art are more akin to the 2D Disney movies. For the most part, this does the movie a lot of favors. Oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. The colors are extremely pretty, and the movie as a whole is just fun to look at, but there are times where the sudden realization that, oh yeah, this is 3D kicks in, and you start to have momentary whiplash. It's never enough to take away from the experience, but there are some rare moments where the models look more like they came out of a weird PS4 game than a mainstream Disney movie. Wish is not Disney's best looking movie, but it's a fully unique experience and does what it's aiming for pretty darn well. But this is a Disney movie, so the sound design is just as important. Sound effects throughout the movie are used to add whimsy to it. I really liked how Star's blinks were accompanied by that one classic xylophone sound you'd hear in cartoons when a character bats their eyelashes. The voice cast is also solid, with everyone doing a great job portraying their character. I am talking! <laughs> Who knew my voice would be this low? Ariana DeBose perfectly captures the endearing awkwardness of Asha without sacrificing her great singing voice, and Chris Pine plays an interesting take on a narcissistic antagonist. But, come on, you know we're more worried about the music. This movie had some big shoes to fill after Encanto, considering how legendary its soundtrack was. We Don't Talk About Bruno is still stuck in my head. And thankfully, the music here is as good as you'd expect from Disney. I'm a Star is definitely the most memorable of the bunch. It captures the feel-good energy of the movie with a wide range of skillful voices, and I'm listening to it right now as I read this script because, my God, it's so catchy. And without going into too much detail, instead of a villain song, they opt for a let's beat the snot out of this villain song near the final act of the movie, which is my arguable personal favorite. There's also the villain song. Let's put a pin in that one for later. My mouth drooping? I feel like it's drooping. <laughs> For now, let's talk about arguably the most important aspect of any story, the characters. While not every character in Wish is a hit, it has some strong contenders for sure. Asha is a likable protagonist who you'll undoubtedly root for. I'm here! I'm here! Ooh, just uh, one second. Let me get my breath. <laughs> the film shows Wishes as part of who each character is, and having them broken causes deep grief and heartbreak. The best character has to be Star, of course. This adorable, Kirby-looking, sparkly dude just flies around spraying glitter and magic and fairy dust or whatever on anything he wants, often bringing them to life. So your dust is my dust? 
Fantastic! He's also very fashionable and skilled at knitting, but longtime Disney fans will probably be most amused with Asha's friend group, a group of eccentric teens with their own unique characteristics that might take your mind back to a certain movie about a poisoned child living with seven short, bearded guys. Wait, what? There are others, too. Valentino is Asha's talking goat who, while cute and occasionally funny, is really just along for the ride most of the time. I'm coming! There's Queen Amaya, who ends up being more significant to the story than you'd expect. And of course, there's Asha's family, whose reactions to the disappointing truth of their wishes keeps you rooting for Asha all the more. On the whole, the characters are simple enough to carry every facet of the story while not overwhelming you with too much info. This is where we enter spoiler territory, guys. So turn back now if you haven't seen the movie and you want to. Now, like any other movie, this one has a villain, and I'm sorry to inform you that King Magnifico is a letdown. For the first act of the movie, King Magnifico seems like a really cool, ambitious antagonist by Disney standards, rather than having an altruistic character do a 180 after being way too obvious for way too long, or having a character be purely evil from the start. King Magnifico is established early on as a king who lied to his people, but did so with a genuine desire to protect them from having their wishes crushed. In short, he was obviously the antagonist, but he's given a sympathetic motive as a long time ago. His own wish was crushed and eventually caused him to lose his family, his home everything. This leads to him holding their wishes hostage and outlawing magic for everyone but him. Your wish will never be granted! Sounds really neat, right? Yeah, apparently the screenwriters didn't think so. The dangers of forbidden magic are hinted at throughout the first half of the movie, ultimately culminating in Magnifico taking them on regardless and becoming corrupted. And just like that, the movie is officially done exploring his character development, a choice we find baffling, to say the least. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one thing to have a sympathetic villain who's still pure evil, or even a villain who's gradually built up to be a soulless monster, but to have a character who is at least partially well-intentioned give them several tidbits of backstory that will surely be elaborated on later, and then to later on turn them pure evil without addressing any of it is just cruel, honestly. We never even get to see what Magnifico's wish was, or what went wrong, or how it resulted in him losing his family. When he's taken over by the magic, that's all she wrote. Maybe his wish was well-intentioned, and due to its outcome, he was ruling the way he did out of a desire to actually protect his people from getting hurt. Or maybe it was a selfish wish hinting at a more remorseless king than meets the eye. Either way, talk about a waste of character potential. The dude even got power of friendship at ouch, oh yeah, and the villain song. Honestly, it's just weird and doesn't fit the villain of a story, and only serves to remind us that Gaston is honestly a way better narcissistic villain. But with Magnifico defeated, all lived happily ever after, and that leads us into our final thoughts both for Disney fans and casual viewers. From the handful of Disney fanatic reviews we've read, and even more so from our own viewing, we can conclude that this movie will be hugely satisfying for Disney fans who are invested in the universe. Everything from cameos to cheeky references is present, and then some. But me, personally, I wouldn't call myself an expert of Disney. I went into this movie with few expectations, but even then I was blown away by the amount of love and care that clearly went into it. The friend group being based on the iconic dwarves was really cute, and a good way to give the characters their own personality quirks without being too too on the nose about it. Overall, we really liked Wish. If you're a Disney fan, it's a feel-good celebration of your favorite studio and what makes it tick. If you're not a Disney fan, just go into it with some candy and relax. It's sure to put a few smiles on your face. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're going to go for reasons that definitely don't involve trying to find every bit of merchandise we can of Star. 